Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y and this is Managerial Economics. In this video we are going to talk about an economics application of game theory and talk about a few more examples. Consider a market with two firms. From a game theory perspective, those two firms are our players. We'll just call them Firm 1 and Firm 2. The strategies available to them are they can charge a price of four dollars. This is the profit maximizing price a monopolist would have charged had there been a monopoly in this market. The other option is for firms to charge two dollars in an attempt to undercut the other firm. The rules of the market are if the firms charge the same price then they split the demand equally but if one firm charges below the other then they take the entire market at that lower price. The firm that charges the higher price sells zero. The demand function is, if the price is $4, then the quantity is 40, and if the price is $2, then the quantity is 60. For simplicity, we will assume that marginal cost equals zero. So maximizing revenue is equivalent to maximizing profit. Let's put all this together into the game matrix. Since each firm has two choices, this is again going to be a 2 by 2 grid. I'll put firm 1 on the rows and firm 2 on the columns. We'll fill in the strategies of $2 or $4 for each firm. If both firms charge $4, then the total quantity demanded will be 40, and they'll split that quantity in half and each sell 20. Total profit for each firm will be 4 times 20, which is 80. If both firms charge $2, then they're each going to split the 60 quantity in half and make a profit of 2 times 30, which is 60. If firm 1 charges $4 and firm 2 charges $2, then firm 2 will take the entire market at the lower price. Firm 1 will sell nothing. Firm 2 will make a profit of $2 times 60 units, or 120. And then the opposite would happen on the other case where firm 1 undercuts. Now let's figure out the best responses here. For firm one, if firm two charges $2, they're picking between 60 and zero, they prefer 60. If firm two charges $4, now they have a choice between $2 and $4 and getting 120 or 80, 120 is better. Doing the same thing for firm two, if firm one charges $2, then the better choice is going to be $2 as well, since 60 is better than zero. And if firm 1 chooses $4, then firm 2's best response will be choose $2 because 120 is better than 80. Just like the prisoner's dilemma, we can see that we have a dominant strategy emerging. The better choice is to always attempt to undercut and charge $2. So the Nash equilibrium is going to be both firms charging $2. Both firms will make a profit of 60. Just like with the prisoner's dilemma, the two firms here could have done better had they been able to cooperate and agree to both charge $4. They would have both made 80 profit. The problem is, it's always individually better to try to undercut and charge 2, or prevent oneself from being undercut by charging 2. This is a key issue in industrial organization. When there are more than two firms, we expect them to compete and make less profit than a monopoly would have. When this doesn't happen, then they might be colluding and agreeing to artificially raise the price. This simple model is our first attempt to model an oligopoly, a market with a small number of firms, more than one but not enough to become perfect competition, who behave strategically. Each firm understands that what they do affects the other firm, and what the other firm does affects them. This is essentially a simplified version of the Bertrand model of oligopoly, which we will talk about in greater detail later on. So far in these videos, we've talked about three very simple games that have two players and just two options for strategies. Limiting the options to just two is not realistic in a lot of cases. For example, in our pricing game, a real-life firm doesn't just have the choice between $2 and $4, they could choose whatever price they want. To incorporate this possibility, we need to allow for continuous choices, just like we did with our models of monopoly and perfect competition. This means we are going to need some calculus. Typically, the players in our models are either going to be choosing price or quantity. And generally, we are going to allow them a strategy space, SI, which is equal to 
all positive real numbers, referring to any number zero and up. It could be an integer, a fraction, an irrational number, any non-negative number. For example, consider a two-player game where payoffs are given by u1 is a function of s1 and s2. This means player 1's utility depends on their own strategy and the other player's strategy. And player 2's utility is u2 of s1, s2. Again, player 2's utility depends on both their own strategy, s2, and player 1's strategy, s1. To find the best response functions, we need to use partial derivatives. Remember that player 1 only has a choice over s1, player 2 only has a choice over s2. And so player 1 will maximize their utility by taking the partial derivative of their own utility function with respect to s1 and set that equal to 0. That's going to be their first order condition. Player 2 is going to do the same thing. They will take the partial derivative of u2 with respect to s2 and set that equal to 0. And that's going to be their FOC. The s1 and s2 that solve this system of equations is going to give us our Nash equilibrium of s1 star, s2 star. This is the basic technique we will use for the rest of the course to find equilibria in oligopoly markets. This has been our quick introduction to game theory. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.